uh, Wasset County Fire District Board of Director meeting for March. Uh, we'll start out with uh, the approval of the minutes for February 14th. The region had a chance to look at them over. Sure, this was, this was one of them, was it? Was this one of them? 
and, and of course they weren't that low. So I, I, if you've got a minute, I'd like Jody to, to just kind of give you an idea of what, where we're at on it. Yes, please. And so that we can coordinate with the fire, fire people. What is this hydro test at? Uh, as far as flow, as far as pressure. Well, uh, I tested it, the static pressure is 45 PSI. And we float it, I float it twice, went back and refloated. It. It's an 840 PS, or 840 gallons per minute sort of flows. That being said, initially, um, the fire department said we didn't have enough pressure. I didn't believe them, but after I investigated, I understand what happened. At least, I think, well, what happened. <clears throat> At the hydrant, we tested it, there's actually 45 PSI, 840 gallons per minute. But what happened was uh, they hooked a, what do you call it, an LD, LDH line to the hydrant, then they ran down the road and up the hill. And there's a difference between static pressure and flowing pressure. When I flowed the hydrant, as you look on the pressure gauge, it flows at 25 PSI by the hydrant. So if you're to push that water through that line up the hill and into the fire truck, uh, you already have only 25 pounds of flowing pressure at the hydrant. Uh, you can tell me, Spencer, what do you think is going to happen? So, so you have 840 gallons of an end for 25 psi residual while you're yes. flowing? Yes, flowing, yeah, at the hydrant. So you might have a little bit more than that if they sucked it down to 20, if they started sucking and you get a little 20 residual. But you could be down to 20 residual, right, before you can count your Flow with that residual. I don't know what's uh, what the pump curve is on the on the fire truck and what they can. They, they can pump a little bit more probably than the A40. It must get down to 20, but you can't can't count any gallon per minute under that 20 psi residual. And so flow. what I think happened was between the, the friction in the fire hose and climbing up the hill with the pressure, I just think there was enough flowing pressure to make it happen. And I've talked with Ernie. We have 300 hydrants in Timberlakes. Out of those 300 hydrants, there are 12 hydrants that test 50 psi or lower. And I think those are the hydrants that that, that I'm going to email to Ernie, so they understand which hydrant, to, which hydrants are the problem ones, or which ones it can have. Are those problem. 50 in the same area, or the same type of topography, or are they spread out? They, they're pretty much in the same area, and the reason being is there's a tank, and then there's a zone, and in that zone, that's what the pressure is. There's no way to increase that pressure unless the tank is higher. In all the other places in the subdivision, there's a pressure, pressure reducing valve above the zone. So you can actually adjust that to where you have enough pressure to take care of what's going on. But that is strictly from the tank with no pressure reducing valve in between, so there's not much that can be done about it. So, are all these lines looped now? They are looped, and that was one thing that was said in the last meeting that uh, you know, they're worried about collapsing the lines, but uh, they're looped, <coughs> and they've been designed so that they will float at least a thousand gallons a minute, so whether that's with the pump or not, uh, you know, I guess we're gonna have to find out, but you know, there's some things that we can learn from it. I think that uh, you know by sending early that this this information is one thing. Um, on our fire hydrants, every three to five years, we go through all of the fire hydrants. This is the fifth year, so we're going to go back, start going back through our fire hydrants, and we flow test, we exercise the valves, and grease the threads, make sure everything's okay on the you know on the fire hydrants. And so we want to be able to give that uh, that information to Ernie, and then on the hydrant we have a brass tag. We tag what lot number it's next to, what the flow is of the hydrant at that time, the date, and what the pressure is. So you know we need to help the fire department show them how we do that. They have no way of knowing what we're doing unless we tell them. You have those. GPS too. We have don't have a GPS, but we're working on that. We work with Don's department. That that same information could be in that GPS file. Yeah, and if you guys have access to that, I think it would help. It would really help everybody involved. 
work with Don, Don Woods department. Okay. That would help you with that. Okay. GPS and put that same information on the tag <coughs> of the GPS file. Yeah, that would be good to have that, you know, throughout the whole valley process because there are some other cars in there and uh, we can see what there is need to really work on and how we could get them up. So, just curious question for, for you as far as how many gallons per minute. Is that consistent throughout the whole valley? 1,000 gallons a minute or 800? So this mm -hmm. one flows at what, 850? I don't know about the whole valley, but I know that within our water system, the average flow is about 1,200 gallons per minute. So, in 10 years. Yeah. So, yeah. What, is, what is the code for the whole valley for hydro flow? We, that's a good question. Right? We don't have a requirement. <laughs> it's not a we, Yeah, we didn't adopt Appendix B, which is the only thing that gives us a set flow rate. House Bill 281 would have said it after the 2000. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If you adopt it, if, 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 if you adopt it, adopt it, yeah. So right now we're just just depending on which part of the valley you're in and how many gallons of clothes and what water system you're in. Can we make that more consistent? <laughs> what size are you guys' water lines, basically? In basically, they're eight inch lines. Both are eight. Both are eight and looped. Uh, it was modeled by Hortz Engineering and then the state reviewed it. I guess you know that as well. Mm -hmm. And supposedly it's supposed to deliver what it's supposed to. There's a couple places where you have a six inch line. This was before the D Division of Drinking Water's rule that you couldn't have a six inch line. But that being said, where there is a six inch line, they're looped with two eight inch lines going into the six inch line. They're not more than a few hundred feet long, which your feet need in both bed. sides, and that way, you know, they produce adequate fire flow. So, this particular case, uh, you know, it's hard to even get up there. There are people spun out in the road. The fire department couldn't get there. But, uh, you know, it was it was just a, a mess. Once you enter Timber Lakes in the winter, it's it's hard for everyone involved. So, you know, I think there's some things that we can learn from, and I think you know we can communicate with the fire department. And we can tell them what the pressures are, and uh, you know we can, you know, give any other information that's necessary. We can go with uh, Don Wood. We can GPS these and get those to uh, to the fire department. Um, also, uh, what was it? Two years ago, when they did, went through and did the ISO rating for the fire station, we actually sent the water model to the the other fire marshal who was reviewing that, so that they could make sure it was okay to increase the ISO rating. So, you know, the efforts are being made. Is everything perfect? You know, probably not. But, uh, you know, what's heard when someone says that they're going to collapse the lines or there's not enough pressure is, is interpret, interpreted as the whole world's falling apart, no hydrants flow, there's no pressure. Uh, what are we going to do? We spent millions of dollars and you guys have basically wasted it. Oh, but it be that. Exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I think some education is due. I'm not sure what forum to put the education, whether to put it on our website, whether to send it out, whether to, you know, try Facebook. I really hesitate doing anything with Facebook. I think it's uh, a lot of things just go wrong when you do it there. But, you know, we've got to find a way to communicate better about what we do with our hydrants, what the flows are. Um, and. You know, I've offered to a couple of the owners if they wanted to actually have us come pull a hydrant in front of their house, we'd show them what we do and how it works. And so, so are the, is the, the rumblings happen with, with uh, Timberlake residents? Is that where yes, it, it was posted on? You're not protecting them? Is that the problem? Well, yeah, and if you don't say anything to people, they're going to make their minds up about what it is if you don't tell them what the answer is. So, you have a newsletter uh, that goes out to all your residents? Maybe that's a, rev or a no. source to get information out of a newsletter or a flyer that explains the process and where you're at. We definitely need to do a better job with uh, getting the information out so that people people understand that we are trying to clean the fire hydrants out. We're trying to keep them as you know, it's, it snows. It takes us two full weeks with two machines to clean out the back or uh, clean out the uh, fire hydrants with the back So anyway. We're going to try and get some. That's amazing. 300 fire hydrants. And that takes a lot of cleanup work. It does, especially if uh, um, the flags get flopped down by the snow plows. Because if they're flopped flat and you can't see them, you have to shovel it up. 
Did they find it? Or they, or you hit them with the back bars? The GPS it helped Yeah, a lot. So, so anyway, um, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Did you guys have any questions or? Chief, would it be of any value to park them in than 12? It doesn't know what it looks like. Sure, sure. 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 You know, that some of you know, I mean, honestly, Timber Lakes has done an awesome job. I mean, compared to what's been there 20 years ago, I mean, the line was this deep in some spots. I mean, they've done an awesome job up there. I mean, it just happened to be, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, generally the way we hook a hydrant, we hook it driving the seat. As it was, we hooked the lower one, drove around, drove around the corner, drove up to the driveway. And we lost roughly about 20 feet, 25 feet, so we lost roughly 10 pounds of that. So I think after visiting with Jody, I think if we can mark those spots so that we realize we've got to park the engine rate at the higher because when they say we're going to collapse their lines, the only way we can actually draft and suck out a line and collapse it is put a hard line to that hydrant. And we never hard line. It's always a soft line, so that's always a misconception. We're going to collapse somebody's line because we can our truck will not operate less than 20 psi. That's what happened there. I think our pump cavitated when we was there. Because we had some issues. And, with it. Under the and uh, well I'm not positive that's what it was, but I know we had issues. I mean truck overheated. I mean, we had trouble even getting there with their fast attacks. And, uh, so by parking the, the pumper next to the hydrant, you wouldn't lose the... Uh, we could force the, the pressure up there. We wouldn't have lost it. And then you run your feed line out yeah. from there rather than about your reverse. Well, generally speaking, that's what we try to do. But as Joey says, I mean, when snow banks is seven foot tall, eight foot tall, I mean, they're tough. You know, the neighbor wound up, you know, helping us get some of that stuff out of the way, and which was helpful. So you actually had to knock down the snow bank so they could get the fire trucks to the house that was on fire. And we've got photographs. The banks are taller than our fire truck. So it gives you an idea what was being like. So it was tough. And the banks weren't necessarily because of the road. They were in the people's yards. So you know your fire, fire uh, hydrants surveyed? You surveyed them all so you know where they're at if there's snow buried them? Uh, we haven't had them surveyed. You haven't had no. a DPS location yet? We know about where they're at, but not exactly. <coughs> so. And they've done an awesome job. I mean, that water company up there, I mean, I realize they spend lots of money, but it's a great system. I, mean, I hate to see that type of thing go around. I mean, there was... I was going say, I don't know how it around. I mean... Yeah, there was a lot of issues, but I do appreciate your know, the hard work they've done. He was awesome on the ISO writing when we done it, so I don't appreciate Neil's help up there. I think he's the water board chair. <coughs> and don't try and hire Joey away, please. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Uh, Mayor, uh, how close are you to getting your city? Neil, Neil. Neil. What's that, Mayor? How close are you to getting your city? I was just over talking to Kyrie and a couple of things that the town governor's office said that you know, I need to do, that and that, stuff like that. And so we've got to generate the moment. Moving forward, yeah, uh, get, get, get it out, get circulated by April. I hope to have enough for the signature. That's thanks, Director. Okay, so we're, we're on that. I just wanted some clarification. I was curious to see what, why don't we have, why isn't it consistent around the whole valley on what flows out of those hydrants? You might have a good explanation. Well, generally, the minimum that they shoot for is 1,000 GPM for residential. 1500 for commercial, but I think most engineers and Spence may could help me with it. But I think most of them gun for 1500 and in hopes they're going to hit a thousand. But all the water companies that's what they're shooting for. Most of the time they model it and they try to spend their money what's going to do the biggest thing for the buck. So I'm, I'm actually surprised they can't get more than that on if they're fed from two lines, you know, unless no, it's, it's all next pretty close to the time. We was right up to the tall. But they don't mind that one. It's tough as up on top. Right. Yeah. It was right against the tanks. I mean, we were right at the top of the tank. I mean, we've had great flows, I mean, in the past, but 
I mean, prior to when they worked on the water system, it wasn't that good. So when you're spending money on water systems, you're not really shoot, shooting for a target. Well, if you have a deficiency, you are, but then once you get them all out there, you're still shooting for your lowest spot to try to get it farther and farther. The majority of the system we have probably too much pressure. Yeah. Well, well they're hard pressure. Not working. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they're not quite leaving a thousand of gallons of this. Okay, at least under the apple part, they don't want you to be too fast. I think probably like Spencer said, when you degrade it to 20, it'll flow over a thousand. They're probably off at a thousand meters. Because at 25 gallons, it's still pumping, 25 CSI, it's still pumping at 840. I wouldn't be surprised that other five gallons, if you guys start sucking. But once we, well, we can't suck it. I mean, that's a misconception. That's a misconception. Unless we hard line, yeah. we don't hard line to them. Cause because of that. Yeah. We can't we live with that truck. Line. No. What does it do? Clap, clap. Clap. That's why we couldn't get any water. Because that pump was trying to get it there. We got to deliver it to the pump. If you can't get it there, it isn't going to happen. Well, if, we hard, if we hard line and cause a vacuum, yeah, we can do lots of damage, but we never hard line in my career. Which is last question on that. If, uh, if there was a lot in that area, applied for a building permit and it was under a thousand gallons a minute when you allow them to build a home on that lot. Oh, I'd allow them to build. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's a loaded question right now, so uh, <laughs> prior, prior to uh, January 18th we would have probably had to sprinkle if they didn't make the flow. And they may still have to anyway if a sprinkler ordinance ever passed. But generally, that's what we use as appendices B, even though it wasn't approved, it's kind of a guideline. So and a thousand GPM is generally the lowest we'd allow in us. Yeah. In a residential, in a commercial 1500, so on commercial, if it's under 1500, if they sprinkle it, they deal with that. Well, it, it's a minimum of 15. That's the lowest it can be. You can't be right below 15 or a thousand even if they do sprinkle. They have to meet the minimum. So if it, like a commercial is 1,500 GPM. <laughs>